So we are sketching this today, and this is going to be a 10 minute challenge. So we've got a really complicated building, a, a giant cathedral. This is Norwich Cathedral. But you can see we simplify it massively, but still keep the, the punch, the, the importance, the grandeur of the building, and get in fun little details, people, post boxes, and cars. So we don't lose too much despite the simplification. So let's see how we do it. We've got 10 minutes. Can I finish it in that time? And if not, how much extra do I need? You'll find out by watching. So let's get sketching. Now I'm gonna start, I've got my um, Lamy uh, Safari pen with uh, waterproof inking. And we're gonna just start by grabbing this tower. And it's been a while since I've done a 10 minute challenge. Um, not sure why really, I do I still basically do it all the time at home. I just sketch things very quickly and it's just been a while since I filmed one and put it up, called it a 10 minute challenge. I do think it's a really wonderful way of sketching um, and it forces us to do simplification. And all I'm doing here, I'm just grabbing really big shapes. That's all I'm doing. I've got this tiny little door on this huge structure. So let's emphasize that. And I just want the, the church doesn't need to be super accurate, but you want that idea of symmetry and you want to grab key features. Just get the idea of this complexity of all these windows. Then I'm going to just move up and we can sort of get this, this kind of ridge line of um, roofs and fun chimneys and things going. The reason I want to get that first is because I think there's a lot of simplification that we'll be able to do if we almost just leave this as a kind of negative space but we'll see how much negative space we want to leave and how much we do actually want to fill in. I'm going to make a lot of this this tree at the side I think that's going to be quite important part of our sketch. Now you can see here one disadvantage of using a very fine nibbed pen so this is an extra fine uh, nib um, on my Lamy Safari and as a result it's sort of struggling to keep up and the ink flow is not quite as high as if we use a, a bigger nib so I'm just going to push a bit more ink out from my ink converter and then hopefully that will solve the issue but with a bigger nib you probably wouldn't have the have the need to do that you can see I've got the, because I took my pen off the page and I stopped concentrating, I've got the height of my doorway very much wrong. But we can cover that up with some sort of gestural fun little marks. Coming forward, let's get this car in. Let's just sort of get a really abstract version at least of this little, this car. I think it's quite a fun uh, addition, isn't it, to, we've got this old building we've got these trees and let's get something modern in there we can come forward and we've got this little old lady who's having a walk and then all these little features just add the character this post box is the next thing coming forward now having done that do you see how my ink's much bolder now having sort of pushed it out so i'll just embolden my church a little bit and that lets me see Let's say it lets me just see what I've actually done and how we've managed to build up this scene so far. I'm not going to leave all of this as a negative space. What I think I'm going to do is bring in the just little side bits to this uh, ridge line, as I called it earlier. And we've got another one here. And now we've got these kind of different planes that we can work with. So if we hatch this back plane in, that will give us an idea of what it's going to look like with our sort of simplified view. And I think that's quite effective actually. So we've just got this one plane hatched in. We can bring that hatching all the way down. We've got this focal point. And I think we can leave this blank. We can focus our colours here, here, here in the sky and on the on the floor. So let's do that. We're only about four minutes in, which is great. So we've got loads of time to play with the colors. Now, I'm gonna start with really warm colors. This is quinacridone 
a sienna coming down the church and then it if you look it becomes more like yellowy golden doesn't it so we just take quinacridone kind of gold and pop that in the middle and then as it gets towards the bottom it's almost more gray it's not darker but it's just lost that glow of light so this is a mix of uh, moon glow quinacridone kind of sienna and indigo at the bottom and then i'm just going to get a bit more indigo to start filling in these kind of darker dingy pavement colors and also to come into let's say this doorway and this doorway and the you know one of the reasons i like doing these little sort of 10 minute challenges as i call them is because it lets you practice things like this practice these mixes and see how they really work practice and see how your colors really sort of flow across the page i think it's really fun and interesting way of just getting to know your colours. Now I'm going to let these bits dry a tiny bit and move up to the sky. I'm actually going to swap to a really big brush. So I've got a one inch flat brush and we're going to just pop some cobalt and phthalo blues straight in there and just bring them across. And what I want them to do is blend and merge and let that church tower sort of glow into the surroundings. I'm going to be neatish, as neat as I want to be, around the horizon or the ridge line, as I was calling it. And then we're going to get some of these greens in as well, we said. So let's just pop in a little bit of cascade and gold greens, and they'll do their thing. Same over here. What we've got is a really simple selection of colours, but doing some really interesting things. Now I'm going to let those dry and we're going to move down again and we're going to find the colours in our post box. We're going to give our sort of little lady a nice colour as well. So something which makes her stand out, so a nice, nice bit of a yellow. And I always like a bit of orange for people's heads. So this is a nice touch of orange on her head. And that can blend and move and then this car I think needs a colour as well I know it's white but let's make it a bit of phthalo blue and then just something else shadowy so a bit of perylene violet to produce some of the shadows I always think cars are great if we just give them a glowing headlight and that can be yellow or it can be yellow or it can be a bit of uh, yellow or it can be red or it can be a bit of both so we're going for a bit of both and you see how these colours now just sort of pool, they just do their own thing. Okay, now, there's a lot of intensity down here now. And not too much going on relatively in the church. And the church is kind of our focal point. So, let's go back to our church and just pick out a bit more life in it. So, just bringing that sort of quinacridone sienna down, letting things mingle really nicely. And then getting some of these darker colours again. We've already got the idea of indigo for windows and doors, so let's just keep that idea going. Just touch them in in a couple of places. Do the same for the car window and under the car. And the little shadow under the lady. Okay, and then last couple of touches, I think. Just bring out a bit more cobalt in a few places in this sky and we can even just neaten up as we keep calling it the ridge line and now i think oh no we've even got two minutes left fine so we've actually got loads of time to just do a couple more little bits and pieces which is great so even though things are still wet I'm going to just touch in a little bit of red into these chimneys because I love having a chimney which glows and stands out. Do a bit more red into our post box. We can use these same reds in the church. Now we can also take advantage of the extra time to neaten up a couple of these splurges of colour. And then to bring our spire back to life. And 
and there we go I actually think what I'm going to do there is stop and we'll see what it looks like because we know that we can then see this has been our 10 minutes and what happens if we add a bit more to our 10 minute challenge and I can see a couple of things which would be really fun to do when we just elevate this really simple sketch into something a bit more neat, a bit more special. Okay, so we're mostly dry there. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I talked about neatness. And what we can do to neaten things up is we can cheat. We can go back and re-sketch our little ridge line, our top of our image. But we can do it taking into account where the colours ended up. So we didn't actually have to be that neat with the colours in the first place because we can just go back and use them as an outline. And it definitely works for loose sketches like this to just go back and create those double lines, those bold lines. We can do that down here as well. And let's just continue that line off the edge. It's sort of natural, isn't it, that it would continue to to leave the page now we can definitely do the same thing in this tree here and in the tree we can come and just create a little bit of sort of structure then a couple of videos recently on structure structure in birds structure in sort of general sketching and it's just the idea of creating the planes and seeing well, just showing people that you understood this is a 3d object not just a flat object Flat objects are great, so these flat objects are working really well to push everything else forwards. But sometimes you just want to show that things are 3D. Same with these doorways. Just come in and we can just get a bit more tone, texture going. And let's find the edge of this tower. We've got that lovely glowing effect. And if we give, let that f sort of glowing effect stay, but we give a nice firm edge as well. What you'll end up with is very much the idea of this thing glowing rather than it being a, an untidy sketch. It's now a sort of purposeful allowance for that colour to move. Same for these little dark areas. Just getting those loose suggestions of windows again. Now these dark areas sort of look very purposeful. Some of our little fun details, our car, we can use the ink just to create the really dark areas with those tyres, for example. And a person. It's all much, uh, much the same that we're doing everywhere, all around this image, just picking out little, little extra bits that we can neaten or condense or whatever. I think we're almost done. It's always, since we've a little bit of extra ink. I think we can just do a touch of extra colour, but only in a couple of places. I'm thinking of just enhancing some of these greens. A little touch in here as well. Don't want to do too much because we've got this lovely graphic quality to this sketch now. And then more, to be honest, what I'd like to see is just a little bit more of these highlights so we can just enhance where these colours decided to run and bring out those lovely reds a little bit more. Almost using red as a little bit of line work across our image. And oh, is it worth some splashes? Perhaps it's always worth a couple of splashes, isn't it? Let's just get these red splashes going through the middle of our image and around our tower. And there you go. That is my sketch done. So a 10 minute challenge plus a couple of minutes to sort of emphasize and reintroduce a bit of structure and fun um, and there we go so we've had fun we've practiced our colors we've practiced our shapes we've found a really interesting scene and dramatically simplified it but um, still created something really effective hope you enjoyed that please let me know in the comments what you think and um, it's been great having you along sketch with me if you enjoy please do like and subscribe